friends, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you how I created this makeup look. I kind of love it. A little bit glamorous, a little dramatic, still very neutral, still very wearable. I did incorporate some fun, beautiful color right here, um, but in true Lisa J makeup style, I am showing you how to incorporate color in a very easy and wearable way. If you're watching my channel, I assume you kind of like my makeup style or maybe you're, you can relate to it. It's pretty neutral. I try and teach makeup looks that are beautiful but easy to achieve and wearable for the everyday look, right? But sometimes I get a wild hair and I walk by the makeup counter and I'm like, that color is gorgeous. How would I wear it? How would I wear it? So I'm going to show you how to do that in today's video. This video is in partnership with Pat McGrath. Yay! So excited about that. Um, when they reached out to me, I was like, uh, yes. <laughs> so all the products that I'm using in today's video are from Pat McGrath. I'll have everything listed and linked in the video down in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this uh, tutorial. Let's get started. So first we're going to start with foundation and I am using the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. This is what the bottle looks like. It's beautiful. It's in this frosted glass uh, bottle. It's very heavy. It does have a pump. Uh, I am the shade light medium 10 and I'm going to apply a pump. This is described as having a satin finish. It is supposed to be a buildable weightless coverage concealer. This is what one pump looks like. This is what the consistency looks like. So you can see that it's very thin. It's just running down my hand pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to just take a foundation brush and start in the center of my face. I'm gonna press so that I can get most of the coverage from the product. And then once I get to the perimeter of the face, I will start to blend and use kind of swiping motions to sheer out and blend out that product. Now I'm gonna start with one pump to see how far that gets me. And then I might build it and add a little more coverage if I can in the center of the face. Okay, you guys, it's very, very lightweight. And it does look very natural on the skin. I definitely would agree that this is a satin finish. Granted, it hasn't set quite yet, but the way that it feels on the skin and the way that it looks right now, it's definitely a satin finish foundation. So satin finish means that it's not gonna be, definitely not matte, okay? It's not gonna be a flat matte, but it's not necessarily glowy or dewy either. It just gives the skin a very uh, subtle, bit of sheen, a little bit of a glow, a kind of a glow from within, a very healthy, hydrated look. It's kind of like that ideal, in my opinion, an ideal glowy skin for someone that necessarily doesn't love the glowy look. Like I have said this before, I don't really love a glowy look, but I love a foundation that has a nice satin finish that's weightless like this. It really does feel very lightweight. Okay, so I've pretty much covered all of my face except my forehead. I'm gonna go in with what's left, which is pretty much all of the one pump that we got. And I'm gonna go and buff this into the forehead. I don't really need a lot of coverage on the forehead. Most of us don't, some of us might, but any discoloration that I have is always here in the center of the face. Okay, so because it's a satin foundation, I'm just kind of taking that extra step and pressing and blending, kind of speeding up the setting process, you might say. All right, so that is how we look after one pump applied on the skin. It's very beautiful, glowy. Very subtle, not overly shiny, but definitely a bit of a glow there. I don't really feel like I need more coverage. I mean, maybe I could get a little more there. Let's add a little more there and see if this is indeed buildable. So I'm just gonna pump, I mean, the smallest amount, you guys, look how much I got. The tiniest, tiniest amount. What I like about foundations that have this type of consistency is that they're very easy to spread and blend. So what you'll find a lot of times is a little bit goes a long way because it moves so easily over the skin. It's not one of those foundations that's thick that you have to like blend out really fast because it kind of sets quickly. This gives you some time and you have a lot of um, leeway to move that around on the skin. This is really, really nice. Okay, as far as texture, uh, I would say that it is slightly blurring my pores and texture in the skin, which is interesting because typically satin finish foundations will maximize my pores on myself, but this one definitely does not at all. Um, in fact, it does slightly blur them. I have one side that's a little bit more noticeable than the other side. I don't know why that is. <laughs> all right, so there we go. We have the foundation applied. It's really nice, very pretty. It feels very lightweight. It looks very lightweight. It does have a little bit of a tacky feel to it, but again, I just applied it. I have not even set this product yet. So next we're gonna go and apply concealer. Now I actually got three shades of the concealer. This is what it looks like here. It's in a glass component. I got the shades LM9, L7, and LM10. I think any of them would work for me. LM10 appears to be a little bit more peachy, uh, whereas L7 tends to have, it looks like it has a little bit more um, yellow to it. And then LM9, 
and looks a little more neutral. I'm gonna go with the LM9. It's quite a bit lighter than the foundation, so I think it'll be a good foundation to highlight with. So the concealer is described as being a weightless, full coverage, high performance concealer. So in my head, I think, okay, weightless, it's not gonna look heavy or cakey, but it is gonna give full coverage. When I hear the word high performance, I think that it's gonna last all day and be very long wearing, so. Let's try it out. Okay, so it has a nice little um, slanted doe foot applicator, which I like. I'm gonna apply a little bit because they described it as being full coverage. I don't wanna go in and apply a lot. So we're gonna start with a very small amount. Um, I'm gonna try the concealer brush that uh, is Pat McGrath's concealer brush. This is what it looks like. It's got a very interesting shape. It's a shorter handle. It's really pretty. So let's try that. I kind of like this, like, it's like slanted and flat, but it's also curved. So let's let's try this and see how this works. Okay, so I will start by kind of spreading the product. When I'm working with a full coverage concealer, it's important to me to kind of spread that pretty quickly because typically fuller coverage concealers tend to dry a little bit quicker than hydrating, like more sheer concealers. Okay, so, oh, I like the shape of this brush because it actually gets right into that corner pretty well. And I'm actually gonna use the concealer as eyeshadow primer. So I'm just gonna blend it all over my eyelid. Because it says it's high performance, I'm gonna hope that it will help my shadow stay on all day and double as an eyeshadow primer. And it's gonna brighten my lid a bit too, as you can tell, it definitely cancels out any discoloration on my lid and brightens that up. Okay, okay, this brush worked pretty good, you guys. It actually worked pretty good. I was kind of worried because you know I love to use a beauty sponge. I'm actually gonna go over my, with my beauty sponge just to absorb any extra. I always do this step. All right, that is definitely full coverage for sure. It, I think this color is a good match. You can see that it really brightens up the eye area. Now that we have that on, I'm going to set under the eyes with the um, under eye setting powder. So this is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder, which definitely caught my attention. The word blurring and under eye powder definitely caught my attention because I think that there is this like question of, do I set under the eyes with powder? Doesn't powder magnify texture? Doesn't powder make things under the eyes look drier or accentuate fine lines and wrinkles? Which yes, it can. So I've always been really careful about powders that I use Use, but I always have to set under my concealer with a powder. I just do. So I come from the school of set with a powder, but it has to be the right powder because some powders will make your under eyes look dry, cakey, and accentuate wrinkles. So this one is specifically designed to be an under eye powder. And I have the shades light and I have the shades medium. I'm gonna use medium. It's for some reason looking a lot darker on camera than it looks um, when I swatch it. So we're gonna use this. I'm gonna use just a good kind of under eye setting powder brush and and the texture of it is very it almost seems like a translucent powder okay so we're gonna use that and I'm just gonna go and set under the eye and I'm gonna pull it down here a little bit because I want to test that blurring claim because right here I do have noticeable pores and yes definitely blurring them I want to actually zoom you guys in a little closer and show you right here where you can see my texture. Let me do that. Okay, so here we are. I'm turning so the light, oh, the light is hitting that area. Do you guys see those pores? So I'm gonna go in with this powder and I want you guys to see this. Did you just see that? Okay, I'm pretty impressed by that. I mean, that's, that's impressive. Okay, so next I'm gonna go in and set my whole face with powder and I'm gonna use her setting powder. So this is the shade Light Medium 2. It's the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Setting Powder. And it is described as being weightless, buildable, microfine setting powder. Um, again, when you're using a setting powder, I do believe that dry skin can use powders. It just has to be the right powder, you guys. Uh, the more sheer and lightweight the better. This appears to have some color because it is defined by a color or described by a color. It has a little bit of a yellow tone to it. Let me see if I can get this up close to you guys. A little bit of a yellow tone to it. I'm going to use a big fluffy brush and I'm going to blot my brush into the lid because I don't want to apply too much of it. This is really, yeah, this, this foundation definitely needs to be set. I can still feel um, a little bit of that. So I'm going to go and just dust this all over the face. Okay, it makes everything look so smooth. Nice. 
Very pretty. Okay, so for eyeshadow, I have three shades from Pat McGrath, and I'm so excited to play with these. I purchased one of her um, palettes, gosh, maybe a year ago, and I was so impressed with the quality, but I haven't purchased another Pat McGrath product or shadow since, but I do remember her shadows being like really superior um, payoff and uh, quality. So these are the three shades that I got. I will have the names um, and the formulas listed in the description box below for you, but I wanted to get two neutral shades, and then I thought a fun pop of color would be fun, because I typically don't do a lot of color here on my channel, but I'm going to show you guys how I like to wear color in a very, I don't know, wearable way. Uh, so first we're going to go in with this shade. This is the shade Statuesque, and it's kind of like the perfect transition shade, so it looks. Um, I'm going to grab a fluffy blending brush, and I'm going to work this uh, color into my crease. That is just so beautiful. So much pigment, so creamy. Like, matte consistencies are so hard to get right, you guys. And that just went on like a dream. I mean, that was so beautiful. The color is this kind of warm mid-tone brown. It's not overly warm, but it's just like that, oh, it's just like that perfect crease color in my opinion. I love it. I'm gonna go into the other side and I'm gonna build this color kind of into the brow. As you can see, I'm really kind of taking it up here into the brow. Okay, I think it gives it that really like sultry, like soft, smoky look. The next I'm gonna take this shade, it's the shade Sextrovert, and it's like this really pretty um, golden bronze, and I'm going to take a flatter brush to apply this, and I'm just gonna pick it up on the side of my brush, and I'm gonna pack it onto the eyelid. Oh, that's so nice. I mean, it almost goes on like a cream. It's beautiful. Wow, that is stunning. Oh my gosh, that is so gorgeous. This almost feels like this would be a great kind of one shadow all over kind of look, like packing it onto the crease. I mean, I'm sorry, onto the lid and then softly shearing it out into the crease. That is so beautiful. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Let's go do the other eye. Do you guys see how easy that is going on? I mean, I'm not having to build it at all. It's just going on almost like as if it were a cream product. Wow, so gorgeous. I am gonna apply a shadow underneath my brow to highlight a little bit. I don't have a good one here from Pat McGrath, so I'm just gonna dig into like a basic kind of light vanilla color just to highlight underneath the brow real softly. It's always important to put something there. Even if it's like a lighter concealer, you wanna have a little bit of highlight there. It's just gonna really frame your eyeshadow look and accentuate your brows, make your brows pop a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the crease color that I used, um, Statuesque, and I'm just gonna go right back and run it over the crease. So pretty. Okay, next we're gonna go in with this gorgeous standout color. The shade is uh, Synthetica, and you can see it's this gorgeous glittery kind of navy purple. So pretty. And I'm gonna take a very, very fine, small, precise brush. This is the 204, and I'm gonna load it up. Just load the tip up. Any kind of tiny little precision brush that you have will do. You really just wanna make sure that you load up your brush with product. And I'm going to apply this, um, really work it into my lower lash line. This is one of my favorite ways to wear a fun color like this. I know I don't do a lot of colorful looks on my channel. It's just not how I wear my makeup. Um, and you know, I'm kind of all about creating like easy everyday looks. Um, I think you can still be glamorous and still be neutral, but it's also fun when you do have a beautiful color like that. Because I walk by the makeup counters and I see colors like this and I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. But am I going to wear that to, you know, gymnastics practice or preschool? I'm not preschool. We're out of preschool. School pickup. You know what I mean? Like, I, I kind of always gravitate towards neutrals for that, but it's fun to play with color and I always love applying it on my lower lash line as a way to do that. It adds something fun to the look, but it still keeps it wearable and still keeps it neutral. Okay, so this is translating a little bit more blue. Very, very pretty. Okay, so next I'm gonna take a brush and just kind of run it underneath that to wipe away any fallout. Then next, I'm actually gonna take that uh, bronze sextrovert and I'm gonna apply a little bit more on top of the purple in the outer corner so that it has a little bit more of a smoky vibe over here on the outer corner and then you just see a peak of that color come through. You could also use an eyeliner too. 
Perfect, okay. All right, then next I'm gonna apply mascara and I'm using the Pat McGrath Fetish Eyes Mascara. I obviously have full lash extensions. I just got them filled yesterday. So I'm gonna apply this on the lower lashes. This is what the brush looks like. It's very, very full, kind of like traditional mascara one. It has a lot of fullness to it though. Um, it looks like it would really separate the lashes. It's hard for me to speak on mascara, obviously, because I don't apply it to my upper lashes. Uh, but looking at the wand, it's got a ton of little like um, wand combs, I guess you would say. So I really feel like it would grab the lashes and separate them well. I'm going to apply it on my lower lashes. Yeah, it's nice. It's not clumping at all. Based on what I see on my lower lashes, I think that it would be a pretty good uh, lengthening and volumizing mascara without being too much of either. You know, it's not too volumizing to where it'd be clumpy. It's giving them like a soft feathery look. It's hard when you are just your lower lashes because you want to make sure the mascara is not too clumpy. Otherwise it creates a very harsh kind of crispy lower lash look, which is not cute. Um, and this one didn't do that. I did get a little down there, so I'm gonna wait till that dries. Okay, I'm gonna go and apply my blush um, and bronzer, and I'll be right back. So I've applied my blush, bronzer, and I've applied a little bit of a nude lip pencil. I'm gonna finish the look with just lip gloss. This is from the Pat McGrath collection as well. It is uh, the Flesh Fantasy Lust Gloss, and let's see how this applies. So it's like this pretty rosy nude shade. I'll show you what it looks like. It's got a fair amount of coverage with a little bit of, it's definitely a sheer uh, gloss, so it could work over um, top of a lipstick, but it's got enough color to where you could wear it by itself. I'm gonna apply this um, directly on the lips. Let's get a little mirror here. Very nice. So it's definitely got a good, enough color to where it could be your lip color alone. I think paired on top of a lip liner, it's pretty much the perfect amount of color. It feels pretty lightweight on the lips. It has a really delightful smell. I'm not sure if that's vanilla, but it smells so good. It doesn't feel sticky or tacky or heavy. It's very lightweight, but it gives a really high um, impact and gloss. This particular shade doesn't have any shimmer to it, so it's just more of like your straight up cream lip gloss. So this is the finished look. I really love it. It's definitely uh, stepped up a bit from my normal everyday wear. Very neutral, very wearable, but definitely a glamorous look. I think this would be a great look for evening, date night, girls night out. I'm gonna have all the products listed and linked in the description box below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave me all your questions, comments, all that good stuff in the comment section below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.